All right, I pulled the plastic fasteners through. They were a pain in the butt because they gotta come through at an angle. All right, so next up, I'm gonna put the little uh, little cushion things to help with uh, the vibration and to prevent the rubbing. Things are in the little sponge things, and the fan is on. Now to put the little locks on the little backing plates on it. The fan is on. I can't run the, uh, the thermal switch yet because I got the wrong size uh, hose barbs for the thermal switch. So I got to take those back and swap them out. All right. So I uh, look forward to a part two. I ended up not using the. Uh, let me see if I can find it. The metal thing. It's the metal coupler thing. Here we go. I ended up not using this thing. This is what came from Summit. So what I ended up doing was I went to Lowe's and I get some, got some brass fittings and uh, adapted it. This is the switch down to 3.8, a 3.8 T fitting. Uh, let me show you what I used. That is one of the part numbers. That is the other part number. I'm trying to show you all the part numbers that I use. That's the T. Alright, and hex bushing, which brought it down from 3 8 to 1 8. And I think that is, yeah, those are all the, uh, the fittings that I used. Alright, so there you go. So now let's, uh, let's wire this thing up. Alright. Alright, we got it wired up. I'm going to put some wire loom on it, but what I did, I bypassed the switch for now because I think I found a good, uh, see the piggyback? That's ignition. It's a 10 amp um, uh, fuse. So I piggyback off of it and added a 25 if, for the fan. I'm, I'm going to drop it down to a 20. I think 25 is a little much, but uh, I'm going to turn the ignition on and see if the fan comes on. Fan comes on, we're good. Yep, fan is on, and it is pushing across the, uh, the transmission cord, so we're good. We're good. So that was a good. Uh, basically, it, it says ignition right there. You see, uh, 10 amp ignition. That's a seems to be a good place to piggyback off of it. It only on when you turn on the ignition, not just accessorily. See if the truck will start. Yep, so we're good. Let's see if it uh fan's still running. Yep. Alright, I say that's a win. So let's uh clean the wiring up, put some wire loom on it, and button everything up. No, the fan should be off. Yep, fan is off. So now I'm gonna take this out, plug this on that end of the switch and plug this one in here. And what I did was instead of cutting off the uh, the pigtail, I kept it and I just stuck the uh, connectors in there. That way if I need to change anything, the fan burns out, the switch burns out, it's just plug and play. All right, it got dark on me, so I'm doing, I did all of this at uh, in the dark. The wire loom is ran all the way up to the battery. Then coming down, it picks up the ground right here. It comes on down, then we got to the hot going to the thermal switch, and coming from the thermal switch to the hot of the fan. And the ground, which is picked up from here, goes up, and it connects right there to the, to the fan. So uh, everything is hooked up, everything's cleaned up. I just put these here just to keep stress off of the, the wire. That's all. Same room right here. But uh, everything looks good. Everything looks good. Fan is on there solid. I just gotta, uh, I'm gonna use my grinder and my Dremel to clearance the back of the grill. And once that's done, uh, the grill will be able to go back on there. 
Uh, again, the fan works. I found a good uh, switched source. So everything is looking good. This, uh, that's where I ground it. That, uh, the bumper cover bolt right there. That was a good ground. But, um, that's where we're at. Just got back from a drive, went to pick up some food, and not one drop of oil leaked. So, looking good. I'm really liking that uh, liquid uh, tread sealer. It's really nice. So, I think I'm, I'm sold on that stuff. Always used to use the Teflon tape, but uh, I'm liking the liquid uh, tread sealer. No leak. It's day two, early in the morning. Uh, I gotta go pick up a trailer with a stump grind on it. So, we're gonna go ahead and just, it's just out like a, about an inch too much. So we're gonna cut an inch or grind an inch from the back just so it'll fit properly. I'll just step on. Again. And that, that little fan, it looks small on it. If I were to do this again, I would get the, uh, this is the 4-inch fan, so about an inch taller. I would get the 5, I would get the 5-inch, maybe the 5.5. That's what I would do. But uh, everything's looking good. No stress on anything. Alright, time to get the grill back on. The grill is in place, it's not clipped in yet, but it's all the way in. And uh, as you can see, nothing's touching the fan. You can see the cooler right there, and you can barely see the fan through right there. Got about an inch to half inch of uh, clearance. Let me show you what I did. Sorry, that's the right camera. I just hit it with the grinder. No cutting or anything, just, just ground it down. And it fits perfectly. The goal is to have everything still look stock. And uh, I think I've achieved that. Alright, let's put the clips back in. And we're finished. The fan right there. The grill is on. Transmission cool, everything. If you didn't know it was there, you wouldn't know it was there. So... I would say I'm finished with this.